In the last few videos, we've been dealing with light traveling in rays, and rays are imagined as straight lines, and we can do imaging and all that kind of stuff with rays, with lenses. Now we're going to circle back and consider the impact of the wave nature of light on optical devices. And the particular phenomenon we're interested in is called diffraction, and diffraction is a general property of any waves. You can see it in water waves here. Waves coming this direction towards this headland wrap around and change direction and arrive on this beach. So diffraction, simply put, is waves going around things. They go around things. Um, what are some examples? So you can hear sound that is not in line of sight. So you might have uh, someone speaking to you from another room and you're around a corner. You can still hear them. That's to do with diffraction. Also reflection, but definitely diffraction as well. And there are waves on every beach, as I've mentioned. If you take a trip with Google Earth and have a look on every beach, you'll see waves coming in towards the beach, even if the direction of the waves out on the open ocean is not facing towards the beach, the waves will wrap around and head towards the beach. So waves go around things. Now we're going to think about this part, the why. Imagine a point source. So you've got some disturbance here and you're radiating, in this case we'll imagine it in two dimensions, circular waves, but we could imagine it in three dimensions as well, in which case these would be spherical waves. Anyway, these circular waves are radiating out and making circles from this single point source, which we imagine as being some arbitrarily small disturbance on the surface of, say, water. Now imagine we have plane waves. So here are the planes of wave. What we think about is that each point on this plane wave we can think of as a tiny point source. So we divide up a plane wave into many infinitesimal point sources, and then each one of these point sources will make a circular wave. And the circular wave propagates forward, and then the interference between all those circular waves gives us a plane wave in the forward direction. And so this is called Huygens' principle. It's basically a way of thinking about, it's kind of a calculus of waves in the sense that you're breaking this up into infinitesimal pieces, propagating the point sources, and then adding back together again. So you can imagine constructing this as an integral. And indeed, when you consider diffraction, Using calculus, that's exactly what happens. But this is kind of the thought process behind it. We won't do diffraction properly, numerically using integrals until next year. Anyhow, in a circular wave or a spherical wave, you can imagine all your point sources on, lying on a circle here. And when all these point sources interfere on, from this circular wave front, they add up and give you a larger circle. This is called Huygens' principle, and the point is that each point on the wave acts like a point source radiating in the forward direction, and the total wave is the interference between all the point sources. Now let's imagine what happens when waves arrive at some aperture. So these are circular waves travelling, and you can imagine each of these waves being full of point sources that interfere to give the next, um, the next wave front. But now we cut it off at the aperture. So at the edge of this aperture here, we're going to have a wave front here, a little circular point source with nothing over here to interfere with it. And so what happens is the wave bends. These point sources on the edge have nothing further over to interfere and keep the wave going straight, and so it turns around the corner. And so as you propagate it forward in time, so these are steps in time, we see the wave in the middle, the interference keeps going, and the wave doesn't really change shape, but at the edges, it curves around the corner. This is called single slit diffraction. Here are some numerical simulations. So we've got waves propagating up in this direction, and here are the slits. The slits are different widths. It's a quarter of a wavelength, half a wavelength, one wavelength, and one and a half wavelengths. And you can see this basically gives you circular wave fronts. And if you look over here for the wider slit, you see kind of plane wave behavior in the middle and these sort of circular fringes on the edge. You also see in this part here in the animation, you see uh, interference in a standing wave effect because a lot of the wave that arrives at this boundary here is reflected back, and that's what's causing this flashing.